Hello, I'm a vocable object four, and let's 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 continue. Okay, back with our serious expressions. I immediately understood. They had seen me. They knew. It was no use. I can't hide this pitiful state of mind anymore. Are you okay, Agatha? Yeah, thanks. I guess you all saw me. They nodded in silence. I felt incredibly ashamed. You were screaming so loudly. We all rushed in the bathroom to see what had happened. You had some kind of panic attack and injured yourself. You were lying on the floor stiff. We thought you were dead. We carried you here because we didn't want you to catch a cold. Do you want to talk about it? Well, now that you've seen everything, I can't pretend anymore, can I? I have post-traumatic stress disorder ever since I came back from war. Every time I see or hear something that reminds me of all the people who died around me, it makes me nervous, and I end up having a panic attack. I also have nightmares every night, living the same horror again and again, so I barely sleep anymore. That's all. This place makes me feel unsafe, and I have trouble controlling my anxiety, so I finally broke down. At that moment, I couldn't manage to look at them in the eyes. Well, you could have told us sooner. Perhaps we could have helped you feel better. We'll let you rest, okay? But there's something else we have to know. Something else? Since we had to carry you, it fell down. I suddenly realized what they were talking about. Uncontrollable tears fall on the ground. Wait. Shoot. Why do they have Agate's name up? Usually when there's narration, they don't have her name up. This implies she said this out loud. Never mind. Ugh. Ba back into the moment. Why do you have a gun on you? The words hurt. They hurt so badly. I can't hide anything anymore. I... It was too much to handle. After the war, I mean. I came back, but felt empty and depressed. I couldn't sleep anymore. I couldn't escape the memories. I couldn't forget about myself either. I had killed. I wanted the pain to stop, so I bought a gun. Illegally. You were going to... Put an end to my suffering. It was supposed to be... I was supposed to do it the day of the incident. I wanted to take one last stroll before pulling the trigger. How could I have known that there would be a terrorist attack and that I would be trapped here with you? I didn't say anything. I thought it would be better that way. They all sighed in unison. I couldn't um, begin to imagine why the, what they were thinking. Eh. You should rest a bit, okay? We'll be here if you need something. We're keeping the gun, though. We don't want you to do anything reckless. Wait, please, don't leave me alone. But they didn't listen. They split up, leaving me behind. I felt so dirty, so ashamed. I had a terrible headache. Everything was screwed up. I looked at my pills while crying. Was this treatment even working? I didn't feel any better. It didn't erase the memories either. I sat for a while. I tried to remember how I got myself here and what went wrong. The incident was only the day before yesterday, yet it felt like it took place ages ago in another universe. Reflecting on the situation, I took a deep breath and closed my eyes. I think I'll always remember that day, even if I had lived through more perilous situations. This one held a special place in my heart. I remember everything so vividly, because it was a human experience. An unconventional one at that. Just like war, actually.
Maybe it left a mark on me precisely because it reminded me of the war, of the pain, of the hopelessness. And also because it made me feel useful again. I thought I could help people, that I could be a functional human being again. But that may have been foolish of me. One can never return from hell. After all, never. Even so, I remember that day as a moment of hope. I tried to cling to that, convincing myself it was my last chance. Was it all in vain? I... At that moment, I opened my eyes. I didn't want to be alone anymore. Even if they didn't want to talk to me anymore, even if their words would be harmful, I wanted to talk to someone. I glanced around. Talk to... Outline. I went to Outline. I'm... I'm sorry. It's okay. We all have our crosses to bear. I'm just disappointed you didn't talk about it earlier. Sorry. It's okay. You didn't want us to sh know your weakness, is that it? Yes. But every human being has painful memories, so sh you shouldn't be ashamed. I have lots of them too. I know everyone has them, but... In order to be even, I'll tell you about mine if you want. My parents forced me into a marriage when I was your age, and I actually tried to run away with my lover. You had a lover? Yes, a young girl I met by chance. I admired her. She was a little older, and we fell madly in love. Hmm. I wanted to hide my, hide my relationship, but my parents discovered the truth and confined me. She helped me escape. We went on a road trip, just the two of us. But what happened? She had a car and we drove around, following our instincts, wandering while on the road. We traveled from place to place. I saw many landscapes, met many people. Those weeks were the best of my life. Sadly, it didn't last. Someone denounced us, and my parents caught us. We desperately tried to run away, but there was no use. In the end, we veered off a nearby bridge, and the car fell down into the water. Wow. I managed to get out, but when I emerged, I was seized by my family. They locked me away, and I never saw my lover again. Wait! If you were Agate's age, you were 28. Hmm. Yeah, never mind. I won't think about it. I tried to find out what happened to her, but I never found out if she was alive or dead. Well, maybe in the ending we'll get to find out. For years, my deepest wish was to be able to see her again. It never happened. That's why when my husband died, and I won my freedom, I swore nothing like that would ever happen to someone else, so I joined an association. That's quite brave of you. No, it's not much. Anyway, what I mean is that you can find a new meaning to your life. Think about it. I'll try. Thanks. I went back to my corner. Corner. Lost in my thoughts. <laughs> <sighs> that day we were all restless. The different incidents had spoiled our morale. Hmm. We'd had enough. The situation was insufferable. The rescue team was too slow, and we were slowly losing hope. As I was lying against the wall, someone... Staring into the distance with empty eyes, I saw the silhouette of someone approaching me. May I? Of course. We're all strung out, waiting to be rescued, and I need to talk to someone to keep my mind clear. You'll be my unfortunate guinea pig. Sorry. <laughs> I have to say, it's not that unpleasant. I've enjoyed your company so far. Me too. Oh, don't try to be polite, just to please me. 
You know I don't like that. <laughs> I'm serious. I like this bubbly side of yours. And the way you kick butt all the time. I want to become an awesome grandma too one day. <laughs> You'll have to train in the mountains first because being an old lady requires amazing skills. Like patience and even more patience. <laughs> My secret technique is to pretend I can't hear people well when people are telling me stupid things. They usually grow impatient and end up going away. <laughs> Sounds like something you'd do. A peaceful silence grew between us. I felt at ease by your side. Say, Aline, does your association take on new members? It seems full of interesting people. And I have too much time on my hands since I resigned from the army. If I can be useful there, maybe I'll find a new purpose in my life. My, my. Are you serious? We're always welcoming new people, so it'll be a pleasure to count you as one of my spiritual granddaughters. But, is that what you truly want? It's a bit of an impulsive decision, but why not? If all the members are like you, it'll be fun. Then welcome on board. Who would have thought I'd find a new member under the ruins of a shopping center? <laughs> I knew my usual hunting place wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, could... I like it better when I see you happy. Since the beginning, your smile was polite, but forced. That one is genuine. Uh, I was afraid. I wanted to do my best. Now I know I'm not completely alone. Words can be hurtful, but they can heal too, I guess. Let's hang out when we get out of here, okay? I'll make you play MMORPGs with me. You'll see. <laughs> I look forward to that. Hours pass, and still no sign of the rescue team. It was maddening. Since I had stayed still for a while, I started to have pins and needles in my legs. When I went to the bathroom to stretch a bit, I suddenly felt the anxiety come back. I hated that place. As soon as I saw the mirror, the explosions came back in my head. I was at my limit. I couldn't wait any longer trapped underground. I had to see this guy to breathe fresh air. At that moment, I had another panic attack. When I opened my eyes, I was in the hallway. Actually, it looked like a distorted version of the hallway. Blood was pouring from the walls and the ceilings. I could even hear that familiar sound again. There were corpses all over the room. Corpses. So it was a corpse party. <laughs> uh, I need to play that game. I also probably need to see the anime. I did see the original game. The, the old original game. That Markiplier play. It it from what I've heard of the stories, the stories are kinda similar. And but it's a similar idea, you know. Um if you don't choose the right decisions, characters get killed. But luckily here Well, I haven't played the bad ending of this game. I don't wanna know the bad ending of this game. So let's continue. <laughs> No, it's not possible. Don't tell me. I slowly approached the rigid bodies. They had terrible faces, convulsed in pain and fear. Was this even real, or just another delusion? I couldn't tell anymore. No. My companions were dead. I had only spent a few days among them, and I already felt a strong bond between us. I thought I could save them, that I could help them, I could be useful again. Is that all in vain? Somebody must have used the guns. Those jerks. Feverishly, I looked around. I picked up the gun that was on the ground and wandered around in this new battlefield. Wait, how did I get the gun? <laughs> because I presume, like, Alicia put it in her purse, or one of the other characters put it in their pocket or something. You know, I imagine they wouldn't put something that dangerous just laying on the ground, so... How in the world did I get the gun? 
Uh, probably best not to think about it. Uh, I was on edge, expecting to see anything, even my own shadow. Suddenly, I felt a presence behind me. Frightened, I turned back. It was a living corpse, a soldier. He was cursing me for being alive. Oh, it was me. A twisted reflection of me. A woman who had a horrifying grin on her lips, as if she was enjoying it. She was wrapped in darkness, covered in blood and flesh, laughing in a fit of madness. I was the one who had done it. I was the one who had killed them. It had to stop. This chaos had to stop. I didn't want anyone to die anymore. I didn't want to see blood and hatred anymore. The monster slowly came near me. I didn't have time to think. Use the gun? The answer to that is no. No. I couldn't do it. I couldn't shoot. I had to accept the monster as a part of myself. It's something that I'd never... It's something that never completely disappeared. I had to stop running away. The past was painful. The words still haunted me. But I had to go forward to find out why I was still alive. The people who died needed to be remembered. Maybe if I gave them a place in my heart, maybe they'd be appeased. The road would be long, steep, and disheartening. But maybe, just maybe, there was something behind the hill. Something beautiful. As I dropped the gun on the floor, unable to shoot, I heard a drilling sound. Grand Law Gun? <laughs> uh, uh, I paused, confused. The ghost vanished. I felt unstable. My legs were shivering. I had no strength left. Suddenly, there was a loud sound, and the walls exploded. Something was coming. God? Was I going to die? Behind the walls, another world was standing. A mysterious world. Everything became pure white. The light dazzled me. I felt too tired and fainted. I slowly opened my eyes. It was too bright. I waited to get used to the light. When I was finally able to see, I realized that I was in the shopping center's main alley. There were firemen all around me, moving like busy bees. It felt unreal. We had been saved. Somebody has rescued us after all. While looking around me, I saw my companions sitting on stretchers. Doctors were asking questions, examining them. I took a deep breath. I felt a small breeze on my hair. The shopping center had been destroyed, but we were alive. And at that moment, it was all that mattered. We were going to be okay. Aline approached me with a troubled look. Agath, are you alright? You had another panic attack. We didn't know what to do. It's okay now. I feel better. I'm not in a confined space anymore, so I should be fine. What a relief. Don't scare me like that. Sorry. Were you worried? Of course I was. I thought you were going to be one of my spiritual granddaughters. We're off to a bad start if you do that too often. No heart attacks, please. I'm old. Dynamic, but old. Don't forget it. <laughs> I won't do it again. I don't want to disappoint awesome grandma after all. <laughs> That's the spirit. So you're still joining the association, right? For the first time in hours, years even, I enjoyed a strange kind of serenity. I was feeling incredibly well. I don't really remember what happened after that. Our rescue was so surreal, I didn't... I couldn't think properly. The malnutrition and lack of sleep didn't help. I only remembered what the doctors told me. That there was a terrorist attack. That they set up bombs and that the building collapsed due to the impact on the foundations. I also learned many died trapped in the mall under the ruins. Many had escaped without a scratch too, of course, but some had died. I was shocked by those words. After all, I had intended to take my life that day. And yet I managed to survive while others had died. I was flustered. Maybe this was a sign. Maybe somehow, somewhere, someone was trying to tell me something. I shouldn't give up yet. Then I realized words are just like weapons. They can be used to hurt. They can leave lasting scars, invisible wounds. For years I had suffered because of I only heard cruel words. 
but people love me because of my PTSD. Good. I need to do it by by its short short acronym. Hmm. Ah. Drinking liquid. Okay. The ones who should have helped me left me to my sorrow with a mere shrug of annoyance. Their words prevented my heart from healing. Using words as a defense or offensive tool is a, so common you could say they were conventional weapons in the hands of every human being. Anyone could hurt you without realizing it, without noticing what lies behind the memories hidden by the meaning. The words could be used as a powerful weapon to make life better, too. Words can light up the way in the darkest hours. Words can bind people together and allow them to rediscover hope. Kind words can break the cycle the day of the daily unnoticed emotional abuse. That was what the incident taught me, and what touched me. I had met various people who had their own personal stories, and suffered from the same prejudiced words. Because we were different, many people had a tinted view of what we should be, and didn't see us as we really were. It was so painful. And this is the reason why we should use kind words to break that cycle of bias and struggles. To be able to live freely, all of us. That's what I would do from now on. That's how life is. The road is long, but I'll find my way. I'm sure of it. I'm not alone. Aline and I are inseparable now. I'm glad I met her. We'll find our way together, and maybe I will meet other people as interesting as her. Some time later. After the catastrophe, I started to see Aline on a regular basis. I would go to her home to eat snacks and discuss various topics. She was always so energetic. It was this hyperactive side of her I liked most. I felt like she was a foster grandmother of some sort, someone I could tell anything to. The incident was behind me, but I hadn't forgotten my promise. Eventually, I asked Ellen if I could go to the association which she was a member of, so that I could see why, if I would like to join. I must admit, I was full of apprehension. I didn't know how much about I didn't know much about the association, and I was afraid I wouldn't fit in there, that I would bother them. Yet my curiosity was stronger than my fear. That's how, one sunny afternoon, Aline took me to her association place. Everyone seemed, Everybody seemed to know her and greet her with a smile. After a few quick introductions, she took to me what, what appeared to be a break room where two young women were quietly drinking some coffee. Right away, they made room for me at their table. I was impressed. So you're Agath. Alan can't stop talking about you. Really? I've heard that you both went through some t crazy adventures. Yep. Being stuck underneath them all. You don't say. Agatha was wondering about joining us. I'm counting on you to give her a glimpse of our usual activities without scaring her away. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be in our best interest for her to run away. <laughs> I guess you want to show what we do here. I said that sentence wrong? Yeah, I'm quite intrigued. We eat cake and drink tea all the time. Don't say that, Liz. She's gonna imagine things. <laughs> but it's true, we spend most of our time drinking coffee and chatting. To be perfectly clear, you're the one who decided to live in the kitchen just to enjoy my pastries. <laughs> but they're so delicious, Alan. You can't resist your dishes. You know it too well. Anyway. We also do important things, like poster campaigns against discrimination, for example, or pride marches. We sometimes run a booth for those kind of events, too, but in those cases, it's mainly to listen to people and give them some info. 
My question might sound a bit stupid, but since you're an LGBT association, do the members all have to be non-straight? Of course not. We have people with all kinds of sexual orientations, and we accept people who just want to be allies and relay our message. Is Even if it can be kind of hard to coexist from time to time. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you see, Agatha, the world is not made of black and white, whether some really subtle shades of gray. As it happens, sometimes we deal with well-intentioned but careless people or abusive people who just hang out with us to be praised or who would have no remorse stamping on us at the first glance. At first... Golly! <laughs> at the first chance. The thing is, people don't walk around with signs telling us what their intentions are. To sum things up, you can't ever know for sure what's happening in another person's mind. Sometimes you think you're dealing with sincere people while they just want to stir trouble. So we have so sadly become kind of suspicious. I see. This makes the set makes the situation seem worse than it is. But yeah, we've seen a lot of different people. That's why we'd rather talk to you first, to get to know you a bit better. We want to protect ourselves from the toxic influences that, did, that dishearten us. If you haven't noticed yet, being part of an LGBT association is anything but boring. <laughs> but let me reassure you, Agatha, we also have a lot of fun. You mean like that time when you had to book our material for the booth and you did it at the last minute? It was very funny indeed. <laughs> oh, we still managed to do it. <laughs> Liz isn't that good with priorities, but she's awesome when we need someone to talk to people about our actions. Sorry if logistics aren't really my thing. You're so much better than me at it, Allison. Of course, but I still need a hand from time to time, you know, to design the flyers, for example. I can't do that alone. And Allison is really good with logistics, but she's stressed all the time. It's hard to stay cool when you're also apathetic about approaching deadlines. Speaking of which... Meh. What's going on? Oh, we're going to a convention the day after tomorrow and we're not ready yet. The room should have been turned into an... Eight layer? Eight layer by now? But as you can see, we didn't do much. Delaying work is my specialty. At least Alline made some new cakes, so... Not so long ago. It eases the pain through such hard times. Ah, <laughs> uh, golly. Hard times? You didn't even start the work. Now you're exaggerating, Liz. I'm sorry, but the boxes must be ready for tomorrow. It's gonna be a long night. Oh, good thing my character's here. Do you need a hand? I might be able to help. Oh, thank you. You saved me. You shouldn't have said that, Agatha. Now you're stuck with Liz all night. <laughs> The famous all-nighters before an event. Yep, that's how procrastination works. You procrastinate until the last minute and then get it all done in one night. <laughs> At least it's gonna be fun. As I was eating a cake while being endlessly thanked by Liz, my old life seemed so far behind me. Outline end! Yay! Ah, uh, nuts is... Alicia end, and then Hasten end, and then I'll be done with the game, and maybe I'll have gotten an actual. You finished three routes out of five. Okay, maybe by then I'll actually have a laptop, and I'll get back on Tales of Link.
And then Tales of Link will be over. And then I'll do more music. It'll probably be October by then. I'll be doing, you know, the Halloween stuff. So yeah, that's that's stuff. Boom! Airlines picture. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So just two more people, and which means six more parts. Because it seems like um, this game takes, takes about that many. Uh, so, yeah. See you guys in the next part, or the next song. Whichever comes first. Bye.